you know, we come from a um, spiritual tradition of black people. So we were taught by the wise men and women that preceded us in life that we should begin everything in the name of our creator and in the name of our ancestors, knowing that we stand upon the shoulders of those that preceded us in this life. So we also understand that if we are anything of value, anything of good, anything of consequence, it is because we stand upon the shoulders of those that preceded us. And with that, in the name of all the wise men, women, sages, saints, and sages that came, I greet you in the greeting words of peace. As a Muslim, we say it, As-salamu alaykum. Alaykum as salam It only means peace be unto you. It is an honor and a privilege and an esteemed opportunity to be able to talk to you today. I want to talk about the role and responsibility of black students. Why are we learning? What is our motive? What are our goals? What are we trying to seek? Dr. John Henry Clark says that education has only one honorable purpose, and that is to train the student to be a proper handler of power. If we aren't thinking in terms of developing power, then we're wasting our time. Does that make sense? So, why are we in this country? We weren't brought to this country to be made Democrats. We weren't brought to this country to be made Republicans. We weren't brought to this country to be made Christians. We weren't brought to this country to be made citizens. Is that clear? Yes, sir. When the first black people were brought to this country. That's for you. Okay. So you can, no, not all the way. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's good. It's good. It's good. You, you're okay? I'm okay. okay. When we were first brought to this country, we were brought to this country by those that hated our humanity. And somehow, some way, we forgot. And it's now we are under the illusion of inclusion. So we lost our way. And our creator, out of mercy, always sends a messenger or a guide to guide the people back to the straight path when they deviate. So we've had Nat Turner. We've had the Honorable Marcus Garvey. We've had Noble Drew Ali. We've had Harriet Tubman. We had Sojourner Truth. We've had Ida B. Wells. We've had Huey P. Newton. We've had the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. We've had Malcolm X. We've had Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad. We've had so many to guide us back. Because somehow, someway, being under the illusion of inclusion, we gave up the fight. When the first black man and black woman were brought to these shores, they knew and understood that they weren't home. Right? They knew that this was not their land. And they always tried to plot a rebellion, plot an escape, run away. But at some point in our history, from then to 2013, at what point? Did we stop fighting? Did we stop trying to escape? I hold and maintain that we still hold with us the vestiges and ravages of slavery. Black people today will tell you when you begin to talk about things that ill affect black folk, that was in the past. I don't like talking about the past. If you continue to look back, you can't move forward. Right? I'm the only one that ever heard that. No, sir. You're right. Mm -hmm. But when you begin to talk about things that ill affect black people, we'll say, stop talking like that. Stop living in the past. But the same person who will tell you that 
will go to the Jewish Holocaust Museum and start crying. <laughs> the same person that tell you don't t talk about your struggle, your suffering, will look at Schindler's List and teach their babies. Mm. So you can learn about the suffering of other people that took place on another continent. But you can't even learn about that which happened to your great grandmother. There you go. You can't even learn what happened to your great grandfather. We have separated ourselves from ourselves that we identify with white people. When you got eyes like white people, they say you got pretty eyes. True indeed, bro. When you got hair like white people, they say you got good hair. Right? When you talk, when you articulate, and begin to articulate your thoughts, ideas, and expression according to Eurocentric standards, they say you're so smart. Right? Mm -hmm. We've been separated from self. And so, I want to talk about our role and our responsibility. For if a person is addicted to drugs, they can't get off of drugs and first, I mean, unless they first admit that they're addicted, right? Mm -hmm. If you're an alcoholic, the first step is to admit what? That I have a problem. That's right. And black folk, we can never be free if we think we're already free. <laughs> Harriet Tubman, who? Harriet Tubman. Yeah, I act like that. Yeah. We black people. <laughs> who? Harriet Tubman. You know, we come from that call and response tradition. There you go. <laughs> Harriet Tubman said that I freed thousands of slaves and could have freed thousands more if they knew they were slaves. Mm -hmm. So if doing actual servitude, the people didn't think they were slaves. What do you say to a Negro that got on some Prada tennis shoes and got a Mercedes Benz parked outside? They make $100,000 a year. You get to talk about freedom, justice, and equality. He say, what's wrong with you? You know, we get all bourgeoisie. And the worst one in terms of that is the Negro intellectual. <laughs> so we're talking about the role and responsibility. Black people in America, we were stripped of our name. Mm -hmm. I said we were stripped of our name. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's how we have the name Johnson, Smith, Culpepper, O'Reilly, Daryl Strawberry. Mm -hmm. These are names that identified us with a plantation. Oh, you thought you was uh, Johnson because Master Johnson liked you and brought you into his family. No, you were property. So if Master Reynolds, you know, off uh, roots, if Master Reynolds saw you and said, what's your name? He said, Johnson. He said, oh, you belong to Master Johnson. Mm -hmm. So if we are free indeed, why do we still have slave names? Mm -hmm. When a woman divorces a man, the first thing she gives him back is what? His name. So if we free, why we got slave names? I know, you know, the Negro intellectual. See, it's not really about that. <laughs> you really need to justify it. Right? It don't make no difference. If you're from Spain, what language do you speak? Spanish. If you're from France, what language do you speak? French. Y'all can't talk. I'm the one talking. If somebody come in here, they're going to get me. <laughs> <laughs> if you're from Germany, what language do you speak? German. German. If you're from China, what language do you speak? Mandarin or Chinese. Okay. <laughs> if you're from Japan, what language do you speak? Japanese. If you're from England, what language do you speak? English. English. She said, Queens, look at we so sophisticated. <laughs> <laughs> Something has happened to us just by speaking this language let you know that our process was disrupted. Right? Mm -hmm. If we begin to speak in an African tongue, the African dialect, well, what am I learning that for? You know, in our mind, you know, Afro Swahili, what am I learning that for? Waste of time. Same Negro say that, I speak French. 
<laughs> right? You stick his chest out. <laughs> right? Yeah, you're right. Think they're important. The more you identify with white people, the more important you feel. Mm. So a brother like me ain't got a chance among you. <laughs> right? I come talk to these two black. 